Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at a cool container module system. So these containers allow you to connect them all together and build yourselves little bits of an outpost. Of course, this is another really cool creation from the Steam Workshop, so if you want to have a look at it for yourself, check out a link in the description below. So this is not just the containers, it also comes with various different transport vehicles that we'll have a look at in a moment. But first, I wanted to show you around the various different modules. So we'll spawn our character over here. So there is modules and connectors. We've got the supply module H. So inside here, you can see this is a hydrogen supply. That's what the H stands for. We've also got two buttons with the hydrogen generator to turn it on and off. Compact containers with a little bit of an interior. Very cool indeed. So you can also see you've got an access port near the side door here. So you can access and plumb things in if you need to. Very cool indeed. So you can see there's an O2 refill here. We can also go inside the cabin and see that we have the generator for row two. So these small little cabins have a connector around the back that will allow them to be connected to these various connection points. But let's keep having a look at them. So we've got the medical module one. So inside here we've got a cool little bed. We've got a survival kit respawn. Nice little detailing with some cargo containers there. It's a cool little pod. These both function and a level of decoration in each of these pods that you need to understand as well. So let's continue moving through. So coming into here, you can see that we actually have ourselves another medical pod. This is medical module two. This one's just got a seat, so this one's a bit more of a functional one rather than having a full out bed, but you've got a lot of buttons. You can see well, we've got the inner lights here. We can turn them on and off, and we've got the most important part. That's the survival kit there. Very cool indeed, very useful. So moving on, we've got the comms module. So the comms module, you can see it's got this extending antenna on the outside. And if we go inside here, we can and turn on the outer lights see if we can access them we can't really see them because we're in the daylight we've obviously got the scanner we can turn on adds a little bit of a, a light effect and then we've got the antenna up and down so we can raise that to get a better signal of course in a in a, a less functional state because it being raised or lowered won't really make a difference so let's continue on we've got some power modules coming up now so we've got the module m the energy module m so we've got ourselves some engines stacked across the top here We've got the inner light switch in and off there. We can also turn the hydrogen engines on. So like a little bit like a generator module trailer. Continuing on, we've got obviously solar on top of that one. We've got solar on this one as well, but this one's got batteries on the inside. So if we hit this key, it will begin the unfold of the solar panels on top there. What's really cool about these is they rotate up and fold out really nicely, keeping the actual original container size quite compact. So there we go. We've got the solar panel connected up, and then it's either just up to us, or we can run a script to get it facing the direction of the sun. Very nice indeed. Four solar panels should get us a bit of power. So we're actually onto the sanitary module B. So of course this is a toilet and it's got uh, the amount that the tank is full there. So this one's a bit more of a, a, a pretty tank more than a functional one. Coming over to the next one, we've got energy module B. So this is another battery storage one. I believe this one is without the solar panels on the top. Yep, I'm correct. Then we have living module. So this is a basic living module, something you could drop down first. You've got some power inside here. You've got a little bit of a bed, a little comm system. You've got various different buttons for the outer lights. Uh, the corner lights and some of the other things that are going on around in here. Another little decorative one. And then finally, we also have the drop pod. That is in this green military cover. You can see over the top here, we have some little parachute hatches. So let's have a look at the connectors and some of the other parts. So there's a little bit of an example over here of how you can rotate them to face the sun. How you could connect them all up like this. So you've got the various different modules connected up to the central hub like so. There's some different connections here showing that you can connect it like this. You could pretty much build whichever shape with whatever modules you want. And here's some of the extra adapters that come with the pack. And they're quite easy to print off. Since everything's square like this, you could run it through a 3D printer and get a mobile base out very quickly. So over here, we're actually halfway through loading one of the containers on one of the trucks. You can see they're picked up with these little stacker trucks that come with it that I think are really cool as well. So we can move it into position. And all we need to do is lower it down. So we're going to press 4 to turn it back on. And then when it's in position, we're just going to lock it in place like so. We just need to drop that. Perfect. Back away with the truck. Okay. Oh, put the parking brake on there. <laughs> there we go. Parking brake is on. 
And we just need to lock this up. So there is a locking button around one of the sides. I've just got to find it. Uh, let's have a look. Or maybe it's inside the cockpit. We'll check inside. So we have number five. And it is locked, ready to transport. Oh, 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 no, it wasn't locked. It, well, Aaron did the old P thing. Behave yourself. Remember, lock your wheels and your containers separately. Otherwise, you'll run into that issue. I remember running into, into that problem in the scenario. So we've got the living module M on the back, and we can move out to a work site ahead of the rest of the vehicles if we wanted to. So over here, there is also a larger flatbed truck type trailer. So this can take two modules on the front bed. Maybe through, maybe three at a stretch. Yeah, you could probably put two modules and maybe a connector on there. You can see there's two being placed on there, and the trailer will take three modules as well. So this works exactly the same, but the trailer has some cool hookup options here. So we've got piston reverse that puts the stabilizers down for us. We've got the rotor lock on and off. We've also got the trailer brakes, so the trailer won't try escaping on us while we're loading and unloading. The loading could be quite precarious if we're not careful. So coming around the back, we can hit this button and it'll lock the trailer. We can jump ourselves back in, take our parking brake off, and we need to use three to bring it up. And once it's in a position to actually grab it, we can press number four to turn it off. And then it's really just a matter of getting ourselves into position. Oh, we've only got one of the, the clips on we want to make sure we're quite secure we want both of them legs locked or else we'll have a bit of a dangle so we've got that on now i personally recommend turning it back on lifting it a little bit and then bringing it off the bay of that truck and you can see these little modules the stacker trucks the forklifts if they've called them are really quite stable as well so i'll actually attempt to bring this module onto this truck right here there's something about this i mean you could turn these all into little ships if you wanted to and make it more effective but there's something about this manual sort of approach of moving car containers around that's really quite satisfying so that's on there we can drop that into position on that trailer and then it's as simple as hitting the rear locking button it should lock that container into position heading over to the cab you can also see there's some cool little buttons and icons around this truck as well as a camera on the front there and as soon as we disengage our parking brake, we should be able to go. And you can see we've got full trailer functionality. We have to be a little bit careful not to jackknife. And we do have a pivoting joint there. So as we do go over rough terrain, these containers should stay on the back. But let's put that to the test. So we'll put the parking brake on there. We've got this almost full truck module over here. It'd be nice to see if we could assemble a little bit of a base in this video as well. So what we'll attempt to do is we'll bring that truck over there. We'll unload some of the modules with this forklift and we'll see if we can put a little bit of a base together oh you know what we do need then well let's let's pick up one of these adapters over here so let's go with this beacon adapter and we'll put that here and we'll load it onto the truck so back on over to our forklift while we're turning let's turn our forklift hinges up and back around parking brake disengaged and we're going to load that rear module because then we can connect them four remaining modules to it. And we'll see how quickly we can get a base together. It'd be cool doing like a long distance trip with something like this. So let's see if we can connect ourselves up in the safest manner. Maybe it'll be a good idea just to use one of the connectors in this situation. So we connect that up. We press free. We're going to raise it up to the truck bed. It's quite quick to unload and load up, isn't it, really? Um, let's make sure we don't ram it into too hard. We lock it in place. We need to bring that over one of these landing gears. And then once it's over the landing gear, we can drop it down. Are they green? Yeah, they should be. Perfect. We'll, we'll bring the, the forklift over separately. So let's turn that back on, lower that down, stick the parking brake on, and then we can drive the truck over. So we made sure all the modules are locked down in place. Not got anything spinning off. We're gonna try to go down this slope and set up down near the riverbed we'll see the off-road capability of this trailer here okay so it's managing to handle this all right we've just got a bit more of a bumpy terrain as we get down to the bottom here so we'll set up nicely on the ice lake oh can we slow it down a little bit more break yeah it's handling this fine yeah it's not too off-roady here it'd be cool on the desert planet to see what this was like the new one that's been added in so let's pull ourselves up here we're going to bring ourselves a forklift all over and we'll see if we can set up these modules. So now we're over at the icy area, we're going to begin unloading. I've already taken off one of the modules there just to get myself started. I'm a bit more acclimatized to this machine on the ice. Because as you can see, it's making an 
an awful lot of smoke. So we're going to unload this one from this side. We've unhooked the lock on the trailer already. So let's bring that up. Let's try grabbing this module off the back and we'll see how easy it is to connect them up. Okay. Oh, and that one, please. Let's get a lock on. Let's bring it off the trailer. Let's bring it over to the module there. So we can load, we can begin lowering this one back down ever so slightly as we're on the move. Okay, put a lock on that there. And we'll try lining these up with the stacker truck. There's something about doing this. If you haven't had a play around with trying to manually align blocks up within Space Engineers, it's, it's kind of like a mini game in itself. It's kind of really cool as well. Let's just get this lined up. That's pretty damn good. It's a bit too close to that module on the left. I don't want to really be pushing it. And let's drop that down there. Okay, so the magnetization of that has moved it into position. So we don't cause any more issues. We're just going to hit this key. And it's locked them modules together already. Assembling a base, eh? It's awesome. Right, let's grab another module and bring it on over. So let's just... We probably could turn these wheels down, the turning axis. Because when they turn too far, it looks like they're catching on the body. Um, so what have we got here? We've got the one of the main modules up here at the front. Let's um, see if we can lift this one, even if it might be a bit wonky. Okay, so that is in place, and then we are going to pull that back. But to do so, we're going to have to raise this up a little bit more. Oh, we haven't unlocked this bed. Let's unlock this quickly. So coming over to this side, we've got this little lock on this separate trailer. There we go, module taken off. We could probably take two modules off at the same time if we're smart. Or maybe that would be a dumb idea, we'll have to see. So we'll move this one over into position. This one's going to be a little bit harder. We might have to do a little bit of shuffling because we have got the wrong end of it. But nothing we can't stop from happening. Move this over there. It's quite well weighted, this machine, as well. We're not having any issues of balance or anything tipping up just yet. Um, and we'll drop that there for the minute. We'll grab one more module and then we'll assemble them. So overall, it's probably taken us under 10 minutes to drive the modules here unload them it is a very quick module system and that's what making these module systems is probably all about the quickness and the easiness to set up a base and you could always add more functional things to these pods if you're a player who likes super functionality over cool design and maybe carrying a bathroom module with you there we go not got that one particularly straight let's add a little bit more lift to that there we go reverse that back down okay and bring it around lock that there so it doesn't grab around the floor what we're going to do is try threading the forklift between this gap here if it'll fit oh just about a little bit off drop that module down and we'll shunt that module into position and see what happens with that it'd be cool to do some more maybe cargo container missions in space engineers picking up a car container and dropping it off at a location if, if they ever do expand on their NPCs or their little missions, things just like moving a car container or a module like this from A to B without be, having to grind it down could be a cool option as well. So let's push that into place if we can. There's a bit of acceleration, maybe even just pick it up. Oh, we're going to pick ourselves up there. That isn't a good idea. Okay, lock that in place. It's all about lining it up. Yeah, that should be perfect. That's magnetized into place. Let's um, get a lock in. So that one's not for that lock. This one's for this lock. I love that these little buttons, it saves you going into all the menus. Let's jump back into the cockpit. And then all we've got to do is align this last module. So to do this, let's pick it up at the other end. Let's of course reverse our pistons up. And we'll connect it into place. And then we do have a semi-functional base. I would definitely develop these modules a little bit further. I'd personally customize them to, you know, the needs that you have or you, the needs you want to have around your little station or outpost. So that's up. Let's lock that in place and move them over here. And since the size of these, I haven't actually showed you the helicopter transport for them. So that's probably even faster than dropping them into place. So unlock that there. Now all these modules are connected up. We just need to hit the final button. So there we go. We've got a full mini base ready to function and ready to work out. We could just have a little survival kit at this outpost and we'd be good to go. We could start mining operations, processing things. We could have a refinery built into one of these modules or even a large small ship conversion. Well, let's head back up over here 
Now over in this area we have got the two helicopter transporters. You can see this one's got a medical base so you could drop off a respawn area close to the enemy's base before a mission. And these are just as simple as let's lift one into the air if we can. Make sure our landing gears are all disengaged so our rear, our rear ones are disengaged. Let's disengage our front. And to scoop up one of these modules, all we have to do is let's scoop up the drop pod at the end. That would be a cool one to have a go with. So let's bring the module over the lake. I don't know if this will be an automatic parachute deploy. Just line it up. And once we're in position, it should magnetize. And then we just need to hit the connector. So number five, we're connected. Module ready to go. So with this one, let's see if we climb some altitude and we just drop it. If the parachutes will automatically deploy or not, and that'll be the issue. Um, and three, two, one, and we're dropping the module. Uh oh. Come on, parachutes. Will will you auto deploy? Maybe did I need to load them up first? Okay, I may have needed to load them parachutes up unless there is a button inside. We've just basically dropped one as a giant bomb. Yes. Let's have a look at how that drop pot's actually done down there. So it doesn't look like it's done too badly. You can see we've got a little bit of a dent and damage. All, all the crew would have survived. The power's gone offline. But yes, Aaron, you do need to load up them parachutes. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching and having a look at these cool module car containers. There's a link down in the description of this video if you want to check them out for yourself. And I'd love to hear maybe a comment in the comment section below of what you would put in your own custom module. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.